So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm only here because of the microphone, I'm not teaching from the podium, um, is we're going to say that I've assessed you all and I've determined you're all working on the number seven. That's the number you need to grow today. Now for the uh, sense of efficiency of time, we won't play a full board of this. We will play a half board of it. We'll do a half game. But we're going to try to figure out all the different ways that we can decompose and compose the number seven building a floor. If you look behind you, you can see a student who started to make different combinations of six in that example. Um, and then you can see how they were able to then take their very concrete understanding in unifix cubes, those, those multicolored cubes you have in front of you, to write the equations on their piece of paper so that they can build it, they can see it, and they can keep the equation for it. The first thing we're going to do, and it is, does everyone have a partner? Because you're going to play against somebody. And if you're a threesome, if there's three of you, that's great too. That works. We got someone to our side? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Take 10. Nice. So, oh, simplicity's sake, we'll all start with one of the shades of blue that we have. So, blue cubes will be used first. Okay. What I want you to do is roll the, your. No, should I say number generator or die? Say die. 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 Roll your cube once, get your number. How, whatever your number is now, take that many blue cubes. And in your first column of building a floor, put that many cubes in a stack, flush to the bottom. It should look like what the red cubes up on the screen look like, that column to the far left, three cubes flush to the bottom. Everyone have that? Mm -hmm. All right, roll, we'll, do, we'll just do three, three layers to this floor. Roll the die two more times, each time using your blue cubes to build the subsequent stack right next to it. aspect will come with now. We're all practicing the number seven. That's the number that we have to master. You're going to go back and forth with your partner rolling one die at a time. When you roll, you're looking to see what your number is. If the number you roll will combine with one of your existing number trains to make a seven, you add it to that number train to make your seven. If you can't make seven exactly, if you're too small or you're too large, you lose your turn. You can't go anywhere with it. Your partner gets to go. So there's a lot <laughs> component to winning, but there's a learning component for everybody. <laughs> I just know Jim you, the other thing is when you build your trains, you have to switch color of cubes, so no more using the blue. Now you'll use green and orange, because that's going to help you write your equations for the second half of it. So take a couple minutes to go back and forth. So yeah, so two, yeah. There, there's no like winner price that gets to keep the turn. No one likes. I gotta get two. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah. Take you out. Two works. Can I do six? Hang on. This is what you wanted, right down to the finish line. I am. Nope. All right. Come on, five, baby, five. <laughs> what do you know? No, I think it's ready to do Got it, you got it. Play our assist. Why do I keep hey. one? Oh, you didn't get nothing. Oh, right. You didn't get nothing. Did you like use this cat? I saw that. Well, I think we have to go through the whole <laughs> round to finish right. off. Yeah. Oh, it fell off. Okay. Not a little bit. No. Oh, I have to. No, what? No. I won. I'm never going to get that. You get my six. I'm going to challenge you. Oh, get used to this for Spirit Week. <laughs> yeah, clearly, yeah. There it is. There it is. I'm going to realize that. I played Yahtzee as a kid. <laughs> so you, 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 you see if you get that six? 
So we actually hit the finish line first here. Yeah, you were right. It's turn left. It's all left. Sure. That's third grade math, right? Here. <laughs> fourth grade. Sorry, I can't do fourth grade math. Okay, it is a math. So the final task of what the students would do if they're playing this game is they would take that equation tracker sheet that you got a copy of, and then they would take a look at the cube trains that they made, and they would start to actually write down the equations as they uh, appear. So if they got uh, four light blue with um, three orange on top, they would write four plus three equals seven, or five plus two equals seven, or six plus one equals seven. And they do these types of games, and there's many, many of them, for 15, 20 minutes at a time, daily until the repetition of it uh, gets so built up inside of them that they start to actually really master each one of these target numbers that they're working towards. And then they'll move on to different target numbers, they'll work on to um, different games that I get out of different early numeracy skills. Now, before we started, there was a really neat presentation from the Kennedy School and Students About Building Community, and some of the remarks you heard about, like there's no job out there right now that people don't have to collaborate in. And the whole time you guys are playing, you're talking to each other, you're collaborating, you're strategizing, you have a better chance of winning than I do because you're down to your last train, or um, I think you have a better chance of rolling a number, even though statistically it's all the same probability, but the first graders, they get excited that they think they have a better chance of rolling their number. <laughs> there was laughing, there was gaming, there was enjoyment and learning. That's what we want to bring to the classroom. We like to use materials like this because kids just can't have a procedural understanding of math. They have to have a concrete, conceptual understanding of it. Those cubes are concrete, they're real, you're holding them, they represent numbers. They use that to develop the con concept. In the end, they end up writing those um, equations because that's the abstract part, that's the math language part. That's them taking that concrete math experience and making it the kind of math they want to do, but all the supports are in place for them to make it successful. This is some very exciting stuff. There's great assessment tools. There's many, many great games. Um, there's a lot of fun that's being done in the classrooms that are experimenting right now. So we take this type of philosophy. This can grow down to kindergarten. It can grow up to second grade. It can spread to first grade. It can really define a, a, a great approach for taking on early numeracy. We start to look at the practices and what happens for implications for instruction around NCAS scores. Now what we'll see tonight is grades three, four, five, six, seven in the area of mathematics. 